in the last video I showed the computation of the centered moving average but you see because moving average smooths the series right there of its seasonal components we're gonna have to find a way to reintroduce seasonality in the analysis before we can make a realistic forecast and we'll begin the process by calculating the ratio of the original series yt to the moving average but again we're going to use the centered moving average for reasons I explained in the first video so let's come out right here hit equal the original series divided by the centered moving average and then we copy down we copy down right there alright so now this process which is called ratio to moving average helps isolate the effects of seasonality but unfortunately it also brings with it the irregular components embedded in the original series which is the numerator of the calculation so notice in any event that ratios are greater than one as you can see in a couple of these uh, places in the second and third quarters when sales are particularly high right and they are less than one as you can see in a couple of these in the first and fourth quarters when sales are generally low as an example in the third quarter right here of the first year uh, we see that sales and the random components combined uh, were six percent above the smoothed series above the centered moving average so to speak because we divided again the original series by the centered moving average to get this ratio that you see here so the next step is to get rid of the uh, irregular random components and keep just the seasonal components to do this we're gonna calculate what's called the seasonal indices right and I have my nice little table out here to facilitate that there's gonna be four of these indices one for each of the identified uh, four seasons so to do so we have to align these values with their respective years and quarters so the first here of course is year one quarter three so I'm gonna come out here year one quarter three I'm gonna hit equal and then I'm gonna reference this uh, ratio right there and then the next one would be uh, this one right here which is the ratio for the fourth quarter of year one which you see I've correctly placed it in the box and then right here for year two this is the index year two quarter one I'm sorry let's go back here hit equal all right that's year two quarter one and I'm gonna do this a little bit more efficiently uh, year three quarter one hit equal there that's gonna be the ratio right there and hit enter and how about year four quarter one come down here and that's gonna be the ratio right there and how about year five quarter one that's gonna be the ratio right there and finally year six quarter one scroll down that's gonna be the ratio and all I'd have to do to make this nice and good is highlight all of them and copy down and you're gonna see that they're all nicely aligned these last two here though are blanks because as you can see the, we, we don't have ratios for the third quarter and for the fourth quarter of year six so now next up we take the averages for each quarter so average Hang on a second, make sure we type it correctly. All right, average right there, get all of these. Actually, I'm gonna start from here to get all of these so as to make it global. All right, that's it right there. And then just copy it down. All right, so what we have here are the seasonal indices. A seasonal index of 1.13, for example, as is the case here in the second quarter is telling us that the seasonal effect um, is about 13 percent above the moving average baseline 
in the second quarter. And you can see that the second and the third quarter are the two quarters when the seasonal effect is amplified. So now what we're going to do is to copy these index, uh, indexes or indices, if you like, to their respective quarters. So now right here for the first quarter of year one, hit equal and reference this index right here. And it doesn't matter that we don't have uh, moving averages in the uh, in those quarters or ratios in those quarters. These are global metrics that we're going to be utilizing. All right, and then copy it down for the four quarters. And then what we want to do is we're going to repeat these uh, seasonal indices for their respective seasons across the years. To do so, I'm going to have to kind of lock them up real quick. So using the function key F4, hit enter, function key F4, hit enter, click, click here, function key F4, hit enter, function key F4, hit enter, right there. Now I can highlight this and then drag it down. Voila. All right. So what we now have is, are the seasonal indices for the four seasons identified in this study. To forecast, you would normally have to first calculate the moving average for uh, the out of sample period. Uh, in this case, it's going to be first quarter of year seven. And what you would have had to do is to remember that the uh, out of sample forecast would be equal to the average of the preceding in this case um, values of the um, of the preceding uh, four quarters so sitting out here you would have had to go average and then you grab all of these find their average all right and so using the moving average method the uh, one period ahead forecast is equal to the average of the preceding, uh, in the case of a four point moving average, it's going to be four quarters. If this were a three point moving average, it would have been three quarters, etc. And now, given the seasonal uh, effect, we would have had to probably come out here. Uh, notice my choice of cautious vocabulary here. We would have had to come out here, hit equal, click on this guy right here, and then multiply that by the seasonal index for this first quarter. The seasonal index of 0.86, I click on it, um, will adjust it to reflect the fact that there is a known seasonal impact that would cause the forecast to adjust to that particular, uh, to the uh, uh, specific seasonal impact. So this 3093 would have been your forecast your one step ahead forecast for the first quarter of year seven. Unfortunately, this treatment accounts for the effect of seasonality, but it does not account for trend in the time series, which as you can see is quite well discernible right here. All right, and that means therefore that what we did here is out of here that doesn't work for us. So I'm going to show you how to account for both seasonality and trend. Beginning with a calculation of what's called deseasonalized data shown in the next video.